Praise be to God. Today, we are going to look at authority, the Holy Spirit of God, and healing. Authority, the Holy Spirit, and healing. So while I welcome all of you to our Wednesday healing night, expect the Lord to do something powerful in your life because the Holy Spirit comes to glorify Jesus. That is the most integral part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit of God, according to Jesus in John chapter 16, verse number 14. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will glorify him. Today, the Holy Spirit of God is already here with us to glorify Jesus. Praise be to God. Authority, the Holy Spirit, and him. We need to understand, my precious brothers and sisters in Christ, that the three, that these three are interconnected. Authority, healing, and the Holy Spirit of God. Authority, healing, and the Holy Spirit of God. Now, the authority that God has given us, how can we use that authority? We can only use that authority in the name of Jesus. Now, in the name of Jesus, as we demonstrate authority, something needs to happen. Today, a lot of Christians, they pray, and yet they wonder as to why they don't see certain results. This is something that even I myself, I have questioned some time ago. But as we keep maturing in Christ, he begins to pour out more revelation on us to show us exactly how things should be done. So the authority that God has given you, which is in the name of Jesus, has to be demonstrated. That is number one. Your authority in Christ has to be demonstrated. How should your authority be demonstrated? Very especially when you want to see results through what you are asking for in prayer, something has to happen. Very especially for healing today, in today's context, we are looking at healing. So how can you See the manifestation of the healing that you have been praying for. The key is to command. The key is to command. Authority is demonstrated when you command in the name of Jesus. You have to command in the name of Jesus. Now we are going to have a look at the word of God in James chapter 5 verses 15 onwards. James chapter 5 verse 15 onwards. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The prayer of the faith are mountain moving prayers. The prayer of the faith are prayers that does not have any unbelief. The prayer of the faith are commanding prayers. This is what Jesus said in Mark chapter 11 verse number 23. If you believe in your heart and if you command the mountain to be moved, it will listen, it will remove. If you command it to remove from the place where it is and to be planted in the ocean, it will happen. So today, my precious brothers and sisters, we have to command. If you are battling with the sickness, you have to command it in the name of Jesus. Jesus commanded demons to leave people every time he encountered them. Jesus did not go near the demon-possessed man and pat that person on the head and say, oh, my dear darling evil spirit, you can stay there for a couple of minutes, but after that you leave. No, no, no. Jesus took a firm stand against the demons. He took a firm stand. That's why today when demons manifest, we command them to leave in the name of Jesus. Unless you command, they don't leave. Do you know in the realm of the spirit, demons don't leave if you command, unless you command them. In the name of Jesus, I am telling you with countless experience that we've had with demonic manifestations. Demons will never leave unless you command them to leave in the name of Jesus. Healing manifests when you command it to happen in the name of Jesus. You have to command it to happen. Why? Because the prayer of the faith 
shall save the sick. Now, with authority comes responsibility. Responsibility is divided into two. As you demonstrate authority in the name of Jesus, you are doing real responsibility. Why? Because as a responsible child of God, as a responsible ambassador in Christ, you are called to demonstrate your authority. There is another part of the responsibility which is on the end of the Holy Spirit of God. We see that in the same verse itself. Let's continue reading verse number 15. And the Lord shall raise him up. Look at that. And the Lord shall raise him up. The prayer of the faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. While I was preparing about half an hour ago in prayer, I heard the Holy Spirit of God telling me, Son, you do your part. And I will do my part. It is my responsibility to glorify Jesus. If you command, I will do the rest. If you command in authority, if through authority, if you command sicknesses to leave, my son, my daughter, I will do my part. That is what the precious Holy Spirit of God is telling. Because Jesus never said that Bhima Pereira will glorify Jesus, my name. He said the Holy Spirit of God will glorify me. Today, there are people who have taken these teachings to ungodly extent. When they, you know, when someone gets healed, they take all the credit, they forget God, they say, I did that, I did this, I pioneered this movement, I pioneered that movement. My precious brothers and sisters, you can't do anything without the precious Holy Spirit of God. So we are absolutely nothing without the Holy Spirit of God. So with authority, as we become responsible to demonstrate the authority in Christ and to command sicknesses to live, we are doing our part. Once you do your part, you can be rest assured that the Holy Spirit will do his part because his responsibility is to glorify the name of Jesus. And he will glorify the name of Jesus. And with that, there is something we have to pay attention to which we also find in this verse. Responsibility, there is another part. You have your responsibility. You, the, the Holy Spirit has his responsibility of glorifying Jesus. The one who, who is on the receiver set, that person has a responsibility as well. Let's continue reading verse number 15. And the Lord shall raise him up, and if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Verse number 16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail much. So if you have been praying for a sickness to live for a long time and if you are not wondering why you have not been seeing results, this is the best time for you to examine your heart. If you are the person who is at the receiver said, check your heart. Check your heart for offense. This is, you know, I'm sharing what we shared last Wednesday. Hindrances for healing to take place. Number one, offense. Do you carry offense in your heart? Offense is so powerful. You know, love, patience, uh, generosity, mercy, forgiveness, all these things are very powerful. At the same time, what the enemy also sends are also powerful. That's why we need to examine and re-examine our hearts every single day. Every single day, ask the Holy Spirit of God every morning to check your heart. This is something I do as a habit every morning as I wake up, I say, Holy Spirit of God, please search my heart. You can search my heart better than I can do that with the Spirit of God. Show me what is there that has to be removed with the Spirit of God. There are things, because the Bible tells us, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and at the same time, all life's issues come from the heart. So because of that, you must get rid of offense. You have a responsibility on your end if you are the receiver. If you are the person who is praying for someone else to receive healing, 
you have a responsibility. The Holy Spirit of God, he has his responsibility, which he knows to do better than any one of us, to glorify Jesus. And if you are the person who is on the receiver side, receiving healing, you have to, you also need, you also have a responsibility. Check your heart. Check your heart for offense. Check your heart for unforgiveness. If people hurt you, you have to forgive them. These are things, you know, things like unforgiveness, offense, pride, they can go easily unnoticed. It can go uneasily noticed. That's why we can think that we are praying mountain moving prayers and still we will not know that there is pride within us. We will not know that there is offense within us. And unless the Holy Spirit of God shows it to us, we will not be able to get rid of it. And it's only the Holy Spirit of God who can get rid of it. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. You know, he's reminding me right now, and I, I know why the Holy Spirit of God is reminding me of this right now. He's reminding me, I'm sure all of you, you have heard this story about what happened to me a couple of months before my wedding, how my right foot got sore. And I know for a matter of fact that it was nothing medically wrong. It was a spiritual attack right there. And I want to tell today, you know, my, uh, a precious person who is connected to my life, someone who is very close, who is, is in this meeting, and I want to tell you, as you take authority in the name of Jesus, and as you rebuke that swelling, it will be. But before you do that, just open up your heart before the Holy Spirit of God and say, Holy Spirit, I am opening up my heart for a thorough cleansing right now, Holy Spirit of God. You can see the areas where I need help. Holy Spirit of God, get rid of unforgiveness. The Holy Spirit of God, if there is offense, remove it, Holy Spirit of God. And after that, once you let the Holy Spirit of God to do the cleansing, start commanding it in the name of Jesus. Start commanding that swelling in Jesus' name. This is exactly what I did. This very person that I'm speaking to right now knows this person has seen the swelling that was there on my leg. And the same thing has happened to this person. So it's nothing to be ashamed of because even I've been through this. But I'm telling you what I did after running to doctor after doctor after doing so many scans when medicine was not working. The only person who got rid of that swelling for good was the Holy Spirit of God. So today we have authority in the name of Jesus. And as to command it right now in the name of Jesus, that swelling will subside. It will subside right now in the name of Jesus. It is subsiding right now in the name of Jesus. As you command it, as Peter and John went to the temple called the beautiful, Peter commanded that man to stand up. He said, silver and gold I may not have, but as much as I can. Let me give that to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. He was commanding that person. He was commanding healing on that person in the name of Jesus. This is why if you know, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 14 says that spiritual things are in the spiritual discernment. So through spiritual discernment, if you discern the presence of demonic the presence of evil spirits behind a sickness, you have to command it. That is an absolute must. Because like I said, evil spirits don't live unless you command them to. You can't pray together with them. You can't beg them to leave. You can't ask them to leave. For example, when a demon manifests, you can't ask the demon, will you live right now? No, you must say, in Jesus' name, I command you to leave. That's when they become subject to the authority of Jesus. So as you command the sickness or whatever it is that is troubling you to live in the name of Jesus, it lives. It will live because it will become subject to the Holy Spirit of God. But at the same time, remember every single day, let the Holy Spirit of God examine your heart. You may be the greatest preacher out there still every single day, Ask the Holy Spirit to examine your heart. When you preach, the anointing may function so powerfully 
where even the dead will come back to life, still ask the Holy Spirit of God to examine your heart. That is something the Lord can do better than us. If we try to do it by our own strength, we will fail miserably. But that's when the Holy Spirit of God comes into picture to help us because the Bible tells us his strength is made perfect in all our weaknesses. His strength is made perfect in all our weaknesses. Salaman So take a firm stand. Take a firm stand against the enemy and be discerning to the things of the Spirit. Because spiritual things are only spiritual discernment. And I want to, as led by the Holy Spirit of God, I want to just share one more thing before we start worshipping. And we will see how the Holy Spirit of God and what he wants to do in our midst. And this is for the same person that is here in this meeting. Like I said, it's very close to my heart. There's another person that is connected to you and I who has this same issue. As you lay hands on that person, as you command the swelling to leave, it will subside. It will happen today if you believe and if you do it. It will live in the name of Jesus. Once you know that it's there, it's spiritual, it's a spiritual issue, you must address it spiritually. See, when we get hungry, we eat because we feel the hunger. Or we start, you know, our, our body starts craving for food. It starts demanding for food. The same way when you notice there's an issue somewhere down the line, which is spiritual. Spiritual issues need to be addressed spiritually. That can only be done in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We bless you, Holy Spirit of God. We bless you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Spirit.